They say gymnastics is a sport for the young. You're 18 years old, and there are whispers that your time has passed. But for Carrie Strug, her mind and her body aren't listening. She's back, training for her second Olympics. Back with the man who guided her to her first. She's proven age can defy, winning this year's first major international championship. Very late. Yeah! Wow! Oh. Oh. oh my God! Oh my God, Carrie! If you keep trying and hoping and, you know, dreaming and really working hard, you can, you know, accomplish your goal. So it meant a lot to me to finally win a big event. And, yeah, it can happen if you keep pursuing it. The dream in gymnastics starts early. If 18 is considered old, try 23. The two-time Olympian Svetlana Boganskaya is considered an idol by her present-day competitors. We've watched her mature on the Olympic stage, representing the Soviet gymnastic dynasty. In 88, I was too little to realize it was the Olympics. And you know, it wasn't a big deal for me. But in 92, so it was too much pressure. Hopefully in 96 everything will be better because this one, this Olympics I'm doing completely for myself. Atlanta, Georgia, host city for the games of the 26th Olympiad. 119 days from now, gymnastics will commence at the Georgia Dome and it is all quiet right now, but right next door is the Omni. And today, it's the site for the McDonald's International 3-on-3 three -three Gymnastics Championships. Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with Elfie Schlegel and Tim Daggett. 3-on-3 three -three competition is a brand new format. It consists of a man, a woman, and a rhythmic gymnast. Now, it's a team competition. Tim Daggett, the Americans are sporting a pretty strong team. Well, Greg, the members of this U.S. team are on a roll. As a matter of fact, earlier this month, John Roethlisberger went on to win his second in a row American Cup title. His teammate here, Kerry Strug, finally emerged from the shadows of gymnasts like Dominique Mochianu and Shannon Miller to win her first ever major international title. And the rhythmic component, very strong as well. Jessica Davis, the best the U.S. has to offer. She's won the last two rhythmic national championships in this country. So basically, this team is three deep, and it's basically theirs to win or theirs to lose. All right, Tim, that's the American team. But, Elfie, there are some international stars we should keep track of. And, Greg, leading the way is 23-year-old Svetlana Boginskaya, a two-time Olympian, getting set for her third Olympic Games this summer in Atlanta. Valeri Belenki, who is now competing for Germany, he won a bronze medal at the 92 Games in Barcelona. And Oksana Chusovitna coming off a spectacular performance at the American Cup. But for all three of these gymnasts, they cannot do it on their own. They are relying heavily on their teammates in order to make it into the finals. So, Elfie and Tim, it's safe to say each team is as strong as its weakest link. And as the gymnasts get ready, let's take a look at the rules. Now, there are three rounds of the competition. 18 teams initially start. Only the top eight advance to the second round, and only three teams advance to the third and final round. New life begins in round two, so the champion is determined by a total of only rounds two and three. Looking back at the highlights in the first round, we start with Svetlana Boganskaya. And Greg, I think there are a lot of happy fans in the gymnastic world, not only happy to see Svetlana back, but she is stronger than ever, putting on a fantastic bar exercise. Her teammate is Andre Kahn. And Andre has looked better than I have ever seen him at the American Cup. He basically went through a great competition. That's Andre Khan from Belarus. And Uzbekistan's Oksana Shutsovitnya was on the uneven bars. And again, Oksana back into the international scene, regaining her 92 Olympic form, looking strong and tough, a contender possibly for the Atlanta Games. Love that high bar on the uneven bars, Elfie. And Tim, didn't she make this dismount look so easy? 
now one of her teammates is Diego Lazardi of Puerto Rico. And this is his best event, Greg. Very strong athlete. Also had a good American Cup. A double laid out. And watch this. Perfect landing. And their performances enabled them to make it into the second round. Now, Australia's Joanna Hughes on the balance beam. In a country that really came on strong at the 92 Olympic Games, but that fall was costly for Joanna and her team. And what that meant was that teammate Valerie Belinke had to come up with a big-time performance. And try all he may, Greg. It's just not going to happen, even though Valerie is the most renowned male gymnast in this competition. Does a great ring routine. It's just not going to be enough. And because it is a team competition and not an individual competition, he won't be advancing to the second round. Now, American John Roethlisberger also on the race. And this is actually a very strong event for John Roethlisberger, a world championship finalist on this event. He gets the Team USA off to a very strong roll with some impressive strength moves on the still rings. And of course, a big dismount. John Roethlisberger and fellow American Cup champion Kerry Strug on the uneven bars. Well, Kerry also chose to start on one of her strongest events. Of course, she's coming off a confidence high after winning the American Cup, as well as a performance high. She is looking so good at this stage of the game. Very impressive release skills. You know, Greg, she really is on a roll. Everything working for her. Strong elements, her second release skill of the routine, just as strong as the first. And then what Carrie is most noted for, the height she gets on this dismount and how she just nails it. <laughs> and that routine earned the highest individual score of the first round. <laughs> Very good. Very good, Carrie. Now that was another. The United States had the highest team score after the first round. And when we come back, we will see the Belarusian team in round two featuring Svetlana Boganskaya. Because of its size and color, it's the most recognizable and spectacular of all the rhythmic disciplines. Of course, the difficulty here is trying to keep the six meter of satin in constant motion and away from the body. So we watch Evgenia perform. As with all the rhythmic routines, the choreography is very important in each and every one of these routines, the selection of music. What you'll see from this particular apparatus is a new trend towards balance moves, turns. Of course, remember, as I said before, keeping the ribbon in constant motion is really one of the great difficulties and challenges for all rhythmic gymnasts. very important element to each routine very well performed you notice she has a very nice expression on her face she's really enjoying her routine hopefully trying to get the audience to play off this music She's obviously had some terrific dance training back home, working well with her music. Evgenia Pozlina. If you're looking for a score here, uh, don't, because they're held until all three members of the team compete. Next up is her teammate, Andre Khan, on the pommel horse. And this is actually my favorite event for Andre Khan. He does just about everything you need to do on this event, but he'll get started in somewhat of a slow way, get his speed going, travel across the horse. And what's most difficult now on pommel horse is staying on one pommel for an extended amount of time. Seven times in a row he's been around on this pommel, and then he'll step over to the next, and it's eight times in a row. This is so difficult. The balance is critical. 
Oh. Very well done. Very classic gymnastics body style. His flares, and he'll fly up to a handstand. <laughs> this is a great job. Andre Khan. And finally, now for the Belarusian team in round two, Svetlana Boganskaya will approach the balance beam. Well, I'd say they're doing pretty darn good, wouldn't you, Elfie, this well, team? it's difficult to be the third and last person up. However, she can do this routine in her sleep, and the way she has been performing, this should be quite simple for her. You can see the focus on her face. A very important mount to get things started. Excellent. One of her big tests coming up early in the routine, right here, combination. She is right on. You hear in the background Coach Bella Caroli almost willing his gymnast through the exercises. She really has a wide variety of skills. In her routine yeah. this year, punch front makes it look so easy. But along with the skills, she has excellent choreography. She moves so smoothly on this apparatus. Just beautiful. A little bit shy on that tour jeté. This actually is m much more difficult than it looks. Oh, a, a double turn on the balance beam. And good. Much more difficult than some of those layout combination skills that we've seen. You're gonna hear us say it a lot. It is truly remarkable. 23 years old, she's going for her third Olympic Games. Just the dismount oh. remaining here. S snap, snap, Good, good. <laughs> and look at that smile, it just doesn't get any better than that, Greg. And with the approval of her coach, Svetlana Boganskaya completes her performance oh. on the balance beam. Let's go back and take a little look. Well, she started things out with a bang. Take a look at this mount. Not just a front summy onto the beam, but in combination with a jump. Very difficult. Blind until this point. Immediately rebounds into a jump that was just executed perfectly. The thing that's so tough about that is she doesn't have any time to make an adjustment. Got to move right on to the next skill right here. This is what's impressive for me. Everybody's always taking that little slide. No movement at all. She stuck it cold. And every athlete likes to please him or herself, but if you can make the coach happy along the way, in this case, Bella Caroli, not so bad. So the individual scores, adding up to a team total of 29.025. And when we come back to Atlanta, we'll see the United States team featuring American Cup champions John Roethlisberger and Kerry Strug. Hi, guys. Gymnastics is Jessica Davis. Is from the During the Barcelona USA. Olympics, she Our was featured in a full-page ad for Clairol. Elfie and Tim, how many Jessica of us can say that? Huh? I thought I had that job, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to see Jessica again on the ribbon discipline. She's very serious about her gymnastics, right. a very expressive rhythmic gymnast. Pay close attention to some of the more intricate moves, and just the ways that she actually can maneuver this ribbon. <laughs> You mentioned the way Evgenia smiles. Does that make a difference? Well, I think it depends, Greg, on the type of music and just what type of athlete you really are. With most of these gymnasts, they try to have a different style with all the apparatus. And this is obviously Jessica's more serious and classical look. Beautiful turning ability. Here's one of the more difficult elements in her routine. Acrobatic skills while she tosses the ribbon. Look for those. Rhythmic gymnasts are far more flexible than the average artistic gymnast. They really spend a great deal of time working on this element of their gymnastics. As well as the, the more balletic look, the turns, the balances. Big skill here, excellent.
showing great control. There's the smile from Jessica Davis once the routine is complete. California, she's the 1995 National Rhythmic Champion. And we now move to the pommel horse, where John Roethlisberger is up next for the American team. Competitor from the USA. Uh, and you know, John gets into John his zone as well as any athlete I've ever seen. He's never rushed, takes his time. This is always a tough event, though. The pommel horse, very similar to the women's balance beam. He really does do a lot of visualizing before every apparatus. I've noticed that about his gymnastics. Here he goes, starting on the end of the horse. And oh! Wow. You know, you fall off the pommel horse, Greg, it is five-tenths of a point, and that makes the road for this USA team very, very difficult. You know, I, did, I don't even know what happened. It's just he put his left hand down, and it just slid right off the horse. Sometimes it's actually, we're just talking about him being a great athlete, focus and concentration, but typically when that happens, it is a concentration error. You saw the faces of his teammates, Kerry Strug and Jessica Davis. John, this is a new part for him right here, a double Russian on the end of the horse. So hard to get back on track after a mistake like that, especially on the pommel horse. Just to dismount and go from one end of the horse to the other. A little bit off here, struggles, but gets up to the handstand. John's still looking at his hand there. Well, what do you think happened here, Tim? Is this just a slip? Well, you know, it's it's very, very strange, but you'll see right here, I believe it's his left hand, Greg. Third time he puts it down right here, it just, just misses. You know, I think what happened is he was thinking about traveling across the horse before he had a firm grip with that left hand, and, you know, you can't do things too early. Well, here's Kerry Strug now, and if the United States is going to be one of the three teams to advance to the final round, this McDonald's American Cup champion is going to have to have a good performance on the beam now. And this is a tough event, uh, an event where you're more likely to fall off the apparatus, only four inches wide. Of course, this is an event that Kerry has trained many hours on, but all the pressure is on her now to come through with a top routine. I'm actually surprised that she didn't choose floor exercise for her second event. Or Carrie, of course, very strong on all four of the events. This one has greatly improved. Tumbling skill coming up right here in combination. Four in a row. There's one, two, three, and four. Good. Solid. Good. Little front tumbling, so high. Oh, good. And she is right on. You know, her training, being back at the Corollis, has really done her the world of good. She said, I never want to go back into a competition and feel unprepared. And obviously, the way the Corollis train at their gym yeah. has made Carrie that much more confident about her gymnastics, and especially in an Olympic year. Very difficult move here. Yes. Not quite complete. Supposed to be a complete 360. Just the dismount, double back somersault. And. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, she pulls through. All right. So Kerry Strug. Good job. Very good job. Trying to pick up the spirits of the American team. Yeah, that really is a totally different mindset for Carrie. Usually in a competition, it's only her out on the floor. We take a look at that first tumbling sequence. Elfie, my only criticism is the knees really aren't quite as locked out as they should be. Tim, we're seeing more of a bend because it's in slow motion replay, but uh, you're right. That's something she's going to have to really concentrate on before Atlanta and then the dismount. So powerful, so high. Just a small hop on the landing. So, Kerry Strug looking to give the U.S. team a lift. Take a look at the individual scores. And John Roethlisberger's 9.1, a direct result of that fall from the pommel horse. A total of 27.95. We'll see if that's enough for the United States to advance to the final round.
Olympics. Work continues on the Olympic Park just a few blocks from the Omni. And inside the Omni, the United States has to sit and wait and see if they will be one of the teams to advance to the final round. Kerry Strug did her part with a 9.6 on the beam. Up now is Camille Martins of Canada. She will be performing the rhythmic ball. And with more on the rhythmic ball, here's Elfie. Greg, key elements to look for in all rhythmic routines are combinations of turns, balances, and leaps. This is one discipline where the gymnast strives for the illusion that the apparatus is actually an extension of her body. Greg, Camille actually started rhythmic gymnastics with 1984 Olympic champion Lori Fung in Vancouver. She's now moved to Toronto to train with one of the great Bulgarian coaches, Ludmila Dimitrova. She felt that she needed the change. Ludmila has coached every athlete at every level of the sport, European champions, World Cup champions, and Olympic champions. What you'll notice in this routine is that the music really builds and it builds along with the intricate moves. There's a great balance move. And Elfie, you mentioned the tremendous flexibility. Many people at home watch men's and women's gymnastics and are marvel at the flexibility, but these young ladies are far more flexible. It's, it's incredible. of flexibility and balance. Camille told me earlier that she really emphasizes expression in all her routines. She really wants the audience to be drawn into her performance. Very difficult skill right there. Excellent double turn. Again, one of the trends in rhythmic gymnastics since the 1992 Olympics. More emphasis on turns and balances. That's Camille Martin. Canadian Camille Martin. A member of a real Camille mixed trio. She's grouped with Diego Lazardi of Puerto Rico Toronto. and Oksana Chusevitna of Uzbekistan. Because some countries didn't bar, send a gymnast in all three events. Here's Diego, Diego Lazardi on the high bar. And I think this is his best and most exciting event, Greg. He does some big skills, but he also uses the code of points very well to maximize his start value. He'll start off with a major release right off the bat. Watch, he'll gain a lot of speed here. This is called a Kovex. Two flips over the bar. Very well done. Now here the, is a combination, like I said, that he uses the code of points very well. This actually gives him five tenths of bonus. He's a good gymnast, but a little bit rough at times, kind of walks around the bar, and all those little steps are small deductions. Big dismount, two twists, two flips. Oh, small hop, but very good routine. Diego Lazardi, four-time national champion of Puerto Rico. And two-thirds of the trio have done well with their best gymnast still to come, Oksana Chusevitna. And she will perform on the balance beam. And actually, Greg, I was surprised to see that she chose balance beam for her second routine. I thought she might choose the floor exercise. She's very powerful on the floor exercise. And of course, in this event, strategy is key. You want to make it to the next round. However, she does have a good array of elements. She has performed very strong uh, recently at the American Cup, so this shouldn't be a problem. Opening up very, very powerful mount, front on. Remember, Bokinskaya did the same element with the jump combination after it. She's a very calm competitor, very relaxed. Her choreography, however, is her downfall on this apparatus. Her strength, of course, are the big trick elements. Her power, she gets great height on her jumps.
use one of those skills right now, front summy. Does it with such ease. Look how high it is, a little bit of a balance right there. Rather simple combination, backhand swing to a layout. Most of the top international stars are combining that with two or three layouts in a row. Then the leap combination, as I said, she gets great height. But as you said, Elfie, she really doesn't have the aesthetic value that we see in some of the other athletes. Things look a little bit rougher. And that's her style. Yeah, you know, that often happens, though, when you have an athlete that's so powerful, she can capitalize on, you know, high dismounts like that. And she does that so easily, she could add a twist. Susevitna and Bogenskaya, years old. teammates on the she gold, gold medal winning the unified Olympic team Games. in Barcelona. Also a bronze medalist Here's the, the move where she had just a slight balance break, about a tenth deduction, but look how high she is. She also Landing a little bit low and then just off to the left side, but she manages to pull it all on. That's Oksana Chuzovitna. So Oksana Chuzovitna completes her performance, takes a seat. And as we look at the scores, that team total is higher than the U.S. team, which now falls to third place. Team, now Oksana Chusevitna competes for Uzbekistan, Svetlana Boganskaya for Belarus. Boganskaya, those Olympics must feel so long ago. She was the product of the Soviet gymnastics factory, a child of the system, this two-time Olympian did not know life outside of gymnastics and the Soviet Union. The most decorated gymnast of her time. She was the rival to United States gymnastics programs. She was the enemy. After failing to earn an individual medal in Barcelona, Svetlana Boganskaya retired. But at age 21, she came to a foreign land to train in her rival's gym. When I asked him if I can come here, he said yes. And it was his decision. And I'm so happy here, you know. I don't care what anybody say. I just want to be here and I want him to coach me. It is ironic, this man's entire career, Bella Caroli, he has been battling that Soviet Union gymnastics machine, and now he's training one of their stars, Svetlana Boginskaya. And Tim, strange to see them together in the same country, in the same gym, but they do have one thing in common. They know what it takes to win. A lot of hard work and determination. All right, Elfie and Tim, now as for the scores, Boganskaya's team is in first, followed by the team headed by Chusevitna, and Kerry Strug's team is in third. And the final team in the second round to perform, the Czech Republic's Andrea Sebestova starts it off with the rhythmic rope, and once again, here's Elfie to tell us all about rhythmic rope. Well, Greg, although not as visually spectacular as the other rhythmic disciplines, the rope is considered by many experts to be the most challenging. Greg Andrea was eighth at the 95 World Championships. Creativity is key in all routines. Take a look at her opening here. Talk about flexibility. It hurts to watch. Tosses are also a very important part with this routine. A very difficult apparatus to maneuver. Always trying to keep very tight formations. One of the compulsory elements, three leaps through the rope, and skipping, a very big part of 
this routine. Wow. Curious music style. A lot of changes in pace. Very different selection of music. She's got a lot going in this routine. Very important element here. From the Czech Republic, Andrea Sebastova. And once again, we have a mixed group because she is paired with a couple of teammates from the Ukraine, one of which is Valery Goncharov, now to perform on the high bar. Earlier this month, this young man took a huge spill at the American Cup on this event. You'll see why he does some major releases. A lot of speed right here. First one, right into another one. Oh! Wow, he was completely on the end of his fingertips, barely got his hands on the bar. That's what makes that move so exciting. I tell you, every time you see it, you just, you can't believe they can actually do this stuff. Triple back somersault, three flips. Yeah. Wow. Tim, that was the neatest triple back I've ever seen. And what Elfie means by neat is knees were together, nice and clean form. Did a great job. So, Elfie, what about these first two performances? Well, Greg, Andrea put in a solid performance with her rope routine and Valeri's high bar. That should score well. Yeah, and it should score some trouble, actually, for Team USA. Well, when we come back, we'll see if the United States trio advances to the final round. All that stands between Kerry Strug and the United States is Svetlana Zelopukina. Remember, scores are held until all three are complete and only the top three teams advance. And you know, Greg, I think this was great strategy by Zella Bikina. She's Ukraine. competing on floor Ukraine. exercise it's instead of balance beam. It's a much more stable event, and she's probably going to go out there and do a solid routine at this point in time. It's a good exercise for her. <laughs> Well, Greg, as I said, a good choice strategy-wise for Svetlana. Not an incredible routine, but really doesn't have any major errors. This was the only one that was close to an error, her dismount. It's a handspring front with a full, just has a little bit too much power right here, and kind of bounds forward. The question is, Tim, was this good enough to knock the USA out? Well, I would say it's going to be very close, but I'd say yes, actually. USA total score once again was 27.95. Here are the scores. The scores for the mixed pair from Ukraine and Czech Republic. Score for Andrea Zemeshchipa, 9.35. Good score from the rhythmic gymnast. Score for Valery Goncharov, 9.4. Score for Svetlana Zelopukina. We don't have yet. 
<laughs> well, a look at the figures tells us that anything over a 9.25 in the USA is out of the competition. Well, 9.25, I would Score say that she's Spenhans, definitely going to have that. Bukina. 9.6 and that 9.6 means that yeah, the USA will not advance to the finals and we can trace it back to John Roethlisberger's fall can't we uh, well this is actually where it all went wrong for team USA wow. on the pommel horse and all it takes in gymnastics is one slip of the hand John unfortunately things didn't work out quite the way you expected them to the expectations were high here at this competition for you to win it what happened well the horse is a tricky event, and uh, I can't blame anything but myself. You know, I, I felt pretty good. Uh, maybe I just wasn't focused enough, and my hand slipped off a little bit. But uh, I feel bad. You know, I, I not only let down myself, but I let down my team, and they did a great job. And, and uh, I'll have to pick it up for the next one. Well, here's a look at the three teams that advanced to the finals. First place, the Belarusian team featuring Svetlana Boganskaya. In second, the team of the two Ukrainian gymnasts and the Rhythmic from the Czech Republic. And in third, the real mixed trio of Chusevitna, Lazardi, and Martins. The U.S. team finished fourth. Carrie Strug had a solid meet, and she's with Elfie. Carrie, you just told me the greatest thing. It feels great to be back, and you know, it's really showing through in your gymnastics. You must, must have felt very strong out there. Yeah, you know, I, I had a good competition today. Um, I was hoping we'd make it into the final round, but you know, sometimes this is the way it goes. Um, you know, we have a lot more competitions coming up, and yeah, I'm, I'm feeling great right now. I'm on a high from American Cup, and I'm really happy with my training, being back with the Curlies. I'm, you know, things are looking really good going into Atlanta. Your feelings on John's fall? I know you had to perform right after him. How did you feel about the team? Um, I was a little bit disappointed, but I knew I still had my team to go, and I just, you know, had to make ground up a little bit. Maybe we could somehow squeeze in there, but not this time. But, you know, bigger competitions are coming up. This was just for fun, so next time. <laughs> Gary Strug, and there's John Roethlisberger, and what do they say about a picture being worth a thousand words? We're back with the final round after this. That is Svetlana Boganskaya, and her team is in first place. We will see her on the floor later in this round. But first up is Andrea Sevastova of the Czech Republic, and she's performing the ribbon. Remember, she's on the team with the two Ukrainian gymnasts, Goncharov and Zelopukina put in a great performance with her rope apparatus. Remember that routine, her awesome display of flexibility. Well, she'll take advantage of her flexibility once again with the ribbon routine. <laughs> The music is very important for the audience to try to get them in into the routine. It's obviously important for the athlete. This is a major component to the routine. They're trying to fit the moves to the music. What the gymnasts have started to do is use different styles with all their different apparatus. So you'll see in this ribbon routine, very different look from her rope routine. A required element here, leaps. Remember, this is six meters in length. Very difficult to keep it in constant motion. Beautifully executed double turn. The leg right up to 180 degrees. A lot happening in this routine, Greg. A lot of tosses and catches down on the floor, which is a riskier element to the move. Their balance requirement over flexibility. Incredible. And another good audience reaction to this, this three on three competition, which is making its first appearance in the United States. Andrea finished eighth in the all around at the 19th. Well, the next competitor is Valery Goncharov on the parallel bar. Austria. Our second competitor you notice those stitches team. underneath his chin. Like I said earlier this Ukraine. month, had a it's mishap on the horizontal bar. Charab. But now we're talking parallel bars, and I make reference again to high bar because in recent years, the athletes are starting to do release type elements on the parallel bars. He does two of them in his exercise. First one right here. It's a double back flip. Watch it. Two flips. Very nicely done. 
Second one comes in combination. One and three quarter front flip. Little bit off balance, struggles a little bit. Very nice Diamidoff skill. All the way to the side of the bars. His dismount, Stutz, and double somersault, and great landing. Another very solid exercise. On the parallel bar. Valery Goncharov. Not only does he do the big release type elements, but he also swings parallel bars, traditional parallel bars, very well. That skill named after a Soviet gymnast, Diamidov. So Goncharov with another fine performance under his belt, and that Our brings us to the last gymnast this for this team. Advancing to the balance beam, Svetlana Zelopukina. Greg, I think Svetlana has saved the best for last. This exercise is just packed with difficulty from start to finish. Here comes one of her big tricks right here. Ariel Cartwell watches the two layouts. That is tough stuff. She does it so well, too. Beautiful toes and knees. As Elfie said, this routine is just jam full of difficulty. Here's the highlight to her beam routine. A full twisting summy in combination, round off, just a little bit off, but we'll give it to her. That's a tough move. She has such variety in difficult skills and also the beauty of her choreography. And as Tim mentioned, great leg extension. Her toes are always pointed. I'm amazed at the poise and abilities of a 15-year-old. She has trained this routine more than one time, let me tell you. She has spent countless hours going over this routine. It's not over yet. She has one other skill, her dismount, another combination. It seems like the whole routine is made up of combinations. Moving quite easily, and here comes right here, the end of her routine. It'll take the entire length of the balance beam. Round off, back handspring. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, with Zella Pekina up in a hurry. Uh, wow. Wow, you, you really don't like to see falls like that. That was pretty, that was scary. Bad news, bad news. Well, Ooh. let's hope the tears are tears of disappointment and not from pain and agony. She looked to jump up right in a hurry. This was truly an exciting skill. I don't believe I've seen any athlete do it in the world today. Ariel Cartwell to two layouts in, the, in a row, but this was frightening. The combination dismount. And you see that foot just doesn't get down on the beam. Oh, God. you don't like to see that. But you do like to see her sitting up, her score and those were teammates right after this. Appears to be all right, and the team total for them is 56.2. That's the score to beat. Canada's Camille Martins will perform the rhythmic clubs now. And let's go club hopping with Elfie, who tells us what to look for during this performance. Well, Greg, you can well appreciate the difficulty with this apparatus, the only event where the gymnast has to worry about two pieces of equipment. One of the difficult things for Camille to adjust to, or that she had to adjust to when she moved to Toronto, was that she got a whole new set of routines. And this is a classical style. It's new for Camille, and she says it's quite challenging. your eyes on both clubs they're always supposed to be in constant motion if she moves throws one up in the air the other one she has to be doing something substantial with the other club she certainly takes advantage of her turning ability excellently done That's just a slight deduction. She recovered very quickly. It should only be a 10. Big toss. 
see how high those clubs really go. Just a slight mistake, a small drop, just a tenth of a deduction. You know, a lot of people think that this is a new sport, but only relatively. It made its Olympic debut as a demonstration sport in 1984, was a full medal sport in 88 and 92, right, and returns tonight. in 96. From Puerto Rico on floor exercise, it's Diego. Up next now is Diego Lazardi of Puerto Rico, and he'll be on the floor X. And Greg, you'll see a new trend in men's gymnastics since Barcelona. The code of points, which are the rules that they judge by in men's gymnastics, valued front tumbling very high this time so he'll do a lot of it in this exercise and actually really not too well to be honest a little bit of a stumble there it's very unfortunate because he's capable of doing some major acrobatic elements but as i said he gains the most difficulty by doing these front elements in a row is that a coaching decision or a decision on the part of the athlete? Well, it is both a coach and athlete decision. The, of course, the technical committee for international gymnastics came up with the rules, and in my opinion, they're the ones that messed it up, so. He does show us a little bit of his ability, tumbling-wise, in his last pass. He'll do a full-twisting double somersault. Here we go. A lot of power here. Really nicely done. Tim, that was the best part of the routine. Yeah, as you said, it was the best part. And as a gymnastics enthusiast, that's the kind of stuff you like to see. It just doesn't get any points. A strong finish by Diego Lazardi. And the final gymnast for Our this team is Uzbekistan on the floor exercise. Oksana Chutsovina. And this is someone who's going to show you just how high you can tumble. She's actually going to give Diego a run for his money. She has some of the most powerful tumbling in the world. And look at you. She didn't know where the head judge was. <laughs> We're over here. <laughs> Take a look at this opening tumbling pass. down for this competition. She's actually capable of throwing a full twist in that second tumbling pass. Chose just to do a double tuck. Well, she certainly hasn't lost her flair for tumbling. She needs to work on the choreography, and that's always been her way since 1992. She obviously gets high scores for her tumbling ability, which she didn't lack in this routine. Well, you know, as you said, Elfie, she's capable of so much more. Even though this was impressive enough, this only a double tuck. She usually does this with a full twist. I think she sensed that her teammate had kind of pulled her down a little bit and 9.775 for Chusevitna, good score for her. And, score for Oksana and that team score makes this team and its score the score to beat. Back with the Belarusian team in a moment. Three on three gymnastics championships. 
Well, Chusevitna and Boganskaya are not the only former Olympians from the Soviet Union in the Omni today. That is Olga Korbut, who is living in and coaching gymnastics here in Atlanta. Belarus, the last team competing today, and Svetlana Boganskaya will be competing last. First up for Belarus, Evgenia Pavlina performing the ball. Greg, I think what we've noticed in all these routines is they're, they're very creative, they're very innovative. Uh, the artistic world has decided to hire many rhythmic stars to help choreograph the artistic gymnastic floor exercises. I think they really appreciate the creativity that is involved in these routines. Which brings up the old question, what's most important when you go out there to perform? Well, in artistic gymnastics, there's a split between the tumbling and the choreography, so it really is a 50-50. And obviously, in this world, world, the, the creativity really takes over. and all her balance skills, her turns. Look at that, just beautiful. Pavlina. And next up on the high bar is Andre Khan, now, this young man. From Belarus, His uh, grandparents were born in Korea. Andre he has an Khan. aunt still living there. Actually, the Korean team has tried to recruit Andre <laughs> to be a member of their team. He is, of course, a teammate of world and Olympic champion Vitaly Sherbo. He's one of the most elegant gymnasts in the world. Also does some big skills right here. Here's that Kovacs. Oh, beautifully done. Second release skill. You know, what Khan has lacked in the past is a little bit of strength. He's not physically as strong as sometimes you need to be, but at this competition and at the American Cup, he has done a great job. Double boosting, double somersault. Oh, just... A little bit of a shimmy on that landing, but an excellent exercise. So Andre Khan, let's go back and take one more look at his dismount and let you break it down for us. Tim. Well, this is incredible. Just think about it. He uses what's called a tap, to pike his body right there, pull the bar down, and catapult himself into the air. Two flips, two twists, and just that small hop back on the landing. And you know what? It's all going to come down to Svetlana when we come back. On the Rue de Chaison. The final competitor of the day, Svetlana Boganskaya on the floor exercise. A good one, and dance it. Tonight's competition. Be careful at the first now. All right, now, let's see. Some last minute instructions from Bella. Be careful of the first tumbling pass. He knows that's the key. And he said to her, just dance it. You know, she's been in this position before. She can wrap it up for her team. She just has to go out there and do what she does best. It's Svetlana Boganskaya. But Bella certainly is correct. The first tumbling pass is the most difficult, focusing double somersault. Yes, Out of bounds, that's one tenth of a point deduction.
nice hollow. Good. Good. You know, she can right. dance, and that smile is just yeah, terrific to see. The out-of-bounds on the first tumbling pass is really not much to worry about at this point in time. Bella said, be strong, go for it. She does a double back summy with a full twist. I know. Lots of height. She pulls it in under, gets a little over rotation, and then there you see the foot out of bounds. And, you know, Alfie, I think Bella is uh, edging for our job here. He doesn't keep quiet through the whole routine doing the color over there. She actually had problems with this pass the first day of the American Cup, but no problem there at all. Two and a half twists. And you heard Bella's comments all throughout the routine, and there is his reaction at the conclusion. Yeah, that's worth a high five here and there. And Usually you got to be pretty nervous if you're standing around Bella because he's going to grab you or hold you or hug you or something. Greg, you know, there really wasn't any mystery that this was the favorite team going into the final third round. And really, when Swetlana finished that third and final tumbling pass, she really put an exclamation mark on their win. This team was very strong, all three performances. And there are your scores, and it's not even close. The score needed was better than 56.6. 57.45 makes Belarus your winner. So, the McDonald's three-on-three -three international gymnastics champion, the team from Belarus. This is NBC Sports World, and today it's brought to you by McDonald's, official break of the Olympic Games, by Hershey, the Great American Chocolate Company, by Sears, come see the many sides of Sears, and by Prudential, live well, make a plan, be your own rock.